everyone! So today I have a tutorial on how to make one of these corn husk or raffia rollers. Now, I based this idea off of uh, some store-bought toys that I bought, such as those raffia, or no, uh, yeah, they're made from corn husk and raffia, actually. Um, that are by Living World. They're one of their nibblers. And my pets really liked it. And I thought, you know what? I could make something really similar to this that my pets could love as well. And I could add some treats in it or something. So I decided to try it out. And this is what came up. Um, my rabbit really loves these as well as my guinea pigs. I haven't tried one out with my hamster yet. But I did try it like before before. A smaller one. And he really liked it. So... Yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys how to make these, and I just thought I'd mention now, I'm going to be doing a new series of videos. It's going to be every Sunday, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a homemade toy, because I've recently been really into making toys. You know, I have that whole shelfy thing, and I've bought some stuff, and I have some really cool ideas that I thought I'd like to share with you guys. So, I'm going to be doing it every Sunday, so there will be a separate video for each of these um, homemade toys that I make. So... Yeah, um, sorry if this video is really long, uh, I don't know why it got so long for some reason, but whatever. So I guess I'll just get started and stop making it longer, so yeah, let's get started into the tutorial. Okay, so to make these raffia or corn husk rollers, you're going to need either raffia or corn husk. Uh, you don't need both, just choose one. Um, you'll need some type of hay, I have some timothy hay and some orchard grass. You'll need some type of treat that is optional. I just have a little guinea pig treat mix by Versalega, but it's pretty much fine for all small animals. You'll need some type of uh, string that is safe for your pet, so I wouldn't recommend using like string itself, but some type of sisal or coconut, something that's digestible. And you'll need a toilet paper tube or a paper towel tube, any type of flexible cardboard tube, a pair of scissors, and a sheet of white inkless paper. Okay, so first you're going to need your scissors and your cardboard tube, and you just are going to want to cut it to the round the size of a toilet paper tube. If you already are using a toilet paper tube, you can just skip this step, but if you're using a paper towel tube, you'll need to cut it to size. Um, you can cut it a bit bigger if you'd like, it just depends on how big your paper is, but I'm going to cut it around here. So then I have just a toilet paper tube. <laughs> okay, so now with your cardboard tube, you're just going to want to place it kind of in the middle of the paper towel, or not the paper towel, the sheet of blank paper. And you're just going to want to hold it there and roll it up. You're going to want to try and roll it fairly straight and tightly because the results turn out better if... Do like that, and then you're just going to want to hold it in place like this. Okay, so when you have it like this, you're just going to want to feel where the cardboard tube starts since when it's not very translucent <laughs> paper. So once you figure out where it starts, just kind of fold it in a bit and crunch it like that. And after that, I'll usually just trim off a little bit of the paper because I don't like it to be that long. So then I just cut off around that much of the paper. And then you're just going to want to push in the paper like so and just twist it like that. So it kind of looks like a candy roll in a way. Okay, so now you're either going to take your orchard grass or your Timothy hay. And you're going to want to stuff the little cardboard tube. Um, if you're going to use Timothy hay, I would suggest cutting it up. That's why I put this in a plate. Um, that's why I suggest using orchard grass a lot more because it's already pretty fine so it can fit into the little hole easier. But I'm going to use some orchard grass and some Timothy hay. Okay, so what I mean by what I said is that you just take your scissors and you're just going to want to just cut it up a bit. It is kind of messy, that's why I suggest putting it in a plate, and some will actually go flying everywhere, but that's okay. <laughs> so 
So now as you can see, um, it doesn't take up as much space. It has a smaller volume because it is so fine. So that makes it more suitable and it's just easier to stuff it into here. So you're just going to want to take some. And again, you might want like a plate to put over this because it can get a little bit messy. And you're just going to want to stuff it in. A tip that I suggest is to actually use your scissors and just like stuff all of the hay in because sometimes it'll just take up a lot of space because once you get to around half of the roll, you're going to want to take your treat mix and let me just open this up and you're going to just want to take out as much as you feel comfortable feeding to your pet. So I'm just going to put in around this much and just sprinkle it in there. And then you're going to want to continue filling it up with the hay until you reach the end of the roll. Okay, so as you can see, the roll is totally filled up. You don't want to fill up this paper part because I'm going to show you what to do with that part now. Okay, so you're going to want to do like the exact same thing that you did with the other side. You're just going to want to find where the roll is. And you're just going to go like that and then cut off any access. Um, I wouldn't suggest leaving the ends really long because you're going to have a different end to it. So I'm just going to cut off this paper part so it just kind of looks like that. Okay, so now you're going to get either your corn husk or your raffia. And I thought I'd just mention, um, if you don't know where to get raffia, you can get it either from like a craft store or even Walmart. Um, that's where I got this little bag, and this was for like $2, so really cheap. You have to make sure you get the natural type, though, because sometimes they'll have a glossy finish to them, and you don't want your pet munching on that. They'll usually say so on the packaging. Or if you don't... If you can't get raffia or don't have like enough money to go and buy it or can't find it or whatever your situation is, you can also use dried corn husk. Now, it should be dried, and it's really easy to dry. You can either like uh, dry it in your oven, or you can just like dry it outside, but it's better to dry it in your oven so you don't um, like get any molds growing on it or whatever. And you should use the corn husk from the inside of the corn, not the dark, dark green part, but more like the light green part. So yeah, I just have a bunch of dried corn husk because the pigs really, really like that. Okay, so I'm going to do one side corn husk and one side raffia. And you're pretty much going to have to unroll each of these. And I'll show you how to do the corn husk one first. So you're going to want to grab... A piece of corn husk and you're just going to want to rip it so it is in strands so it should be pretty easy to rip and they should go into pretty thin strands like this and then you're gonna take those strands and I'm just gonna rip these ones again these strands and you're going to want to fold it in half like so Okay, so after you've done that, you're going to want to take one of your sides and you're just going to want to open it up again. So the first time you roll them, they don't have to be super duper tight. So go like that. You're just going to want to slide this in like so, leaving some of it out. And then roll it up once again fairly tightly. Okay, so now I'll show you if you're going to use the raffia. Um, I personally like the corn husk a little bit better because I think it looks cool. But if you want to use raffia, you can as well. So you're just going to want to try and take out a few strands. This is really, really messy things. So again, like, do this in a part of your house that is okay getting, like, messed up. And you usually have to cut it. So I'm just going to cut off as much as I'd like, which is around ugh, that much. And you're going to want to do the same thing that you did with the um, corn husk. So just put it in like so. And then you're going to want to unroll that part. And put it, wait, there. And just roll it up pretty tight. 
tightly. <sighs> so there. Okay, so after you're done that, you could leave it like this. Um, it should look something like this. And kind of looks like a candy roll in a way. Um, I like this corn husk side a little bit better, but... Yeah, that's what it looks like. But I usually add a detail on, which isn't really necessary, but makes it a whole lot cuter. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's just my drink. <laughs> but anyways. Um, I use my sisal twine here. And I cut out a string around 10 centimeters long. So around that long. And you're just going to want to cut two of those. And then what I do, okay, so you're going to want to take one of the strings and you take one of the sides and you're just going to want to kind of just tie a bow. I'm sorry, you probably can't see this very well. Um, it's just because my hand has to kind of go here. But you're just going to want to tie it in a bowl, a bow um, around the side. Oh, that's nice. You can see my hand <laughs> in front of the camera. Okay, let me do this. Sorry, this is probably really bad. Um, but if you see, you just tie a knot there, and then you want to make it into a bow. I think everyone knows how to make something into a bow, so I think that's really necessary to show you guys, and it's kind of hard for me to show this. So, there. You can see, just in a bow. Around, and... Where's the other side? Anyways, yeah. That's how it kind of looks. And then you just want to do the same to the other side. Okay, so this is what the final product looks like. Um, again, it would probably look better if um, the two sides were matching. Um, I usually like the look of the raffia roller. But I find the pets really like the corn husk better. And I like how it goes out farther. So... It's really up to you, um, and I think the bows make a really cute touch. Sorry, these ones turned out really bad, um, but yeah. <laughs> so that is pretty much how to make one of these corn husker raffia rollers. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below. I'm not sure how clear this was because this is kind of like my first tutorial type thing, but I'm going to be doing these every Sunday now, so yeah, I hope you guys like this new series type thing. I think it's a pretty awesome idea. And, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope if you try this out, your pets love it. Bye!